Pete Moriarty here, great to have you with me. We are doing the news. This is uh, Google Workspace News and we cover everything that's been uh, up and updated in the last month for the Google world. So we primarily focus on Google Workspace in these videos, uh, but we've got plenty more on the channel which covers everything to do with business technology. And so if you're new to the channel, we help business owners systemize, organize and scale using a suite of business technology tools. We primarily focus on Google Workspace, uh, but there's plenty in the Google ecosystem. Now, Google releases a pretty comprehensive list of all of the changes that happen in Google Workspace every month. Uh, but you can see here, there's about usually 30, 40, sometimes 50 updates that happen uh, in a space of about 30 days. And so what I try and do is distill them down to the ones that I think are most relevant for business owners and entrepreneurs to know about that's going on in Google. And I've picked up some pretty cool ones this month. I'll go through some demos and you know see if we can work out some of these changes that have happened. But without further ado, let's get into the news. So uh, here's a new final, final, final update on Google Sites from Google. So Google have been talking about this for a long, long time. Uh, and Google have said that uh, now, finally, 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 uh, they're gonna actually be shutting down the old version of Google Sites. Uh, so if you have been around our channel for a long time, you would know that we help business owners to systemize their business by creating an online standard operating procedures manual using Google Sites. Uh, and uh, for a long time, that was the classic version of Sites, what Google called the classic Sites. Uh, and what that was really good for is you could do things like uh, multiple levels of permissions for different um, areas of uh, uh, one particular site, um, but you could also create quite large large sites and embed lots of content in them. Now, Google remade Google Sites uh, into the new Google Sites, but they made it kind of like a Google Drive file rather than a completely separate website. And what ended up happening was, unfortunately, um, they missed out on some of the features when they rebuilt the new version of Sites. And so we've got many customers that are clinging on to the old version of Google Sites. Over time, given different deadlines for when they were gonna shut down the classic Google Sites, they haven't yet built every single feature into the new version of Google Sites, unfortunately, we still don't have that uh, you know, page level permissions feature. Uh, it's probably not gonna come to be honest, uh, but what Google have done is they've given a final, final date for those still using the classic sites um, to have them actually fully shut down. So that is happening. It's December 1, 2022. If you are still using the version of Google sites, uh, what you'll see there is Google will actually um, uh, give you a archive of your old site. Uh, and then with that archive, uh, what's gonna end up happening is you'll have a, a new site kind of like uh, converted. Uh, and once the new site has been converted, you can still access the archive if you need to, but you can't kind of use it on a day-to-day -day basis. So sites officially, finally going away. I don't think they're gonna change the date again on that one. Next up, Google are giving us the ability to add a shared drive to a specific organizational unit. Now this is more useful for businesses that have, let's say more than 20 employees. So if you've got a larger team, maybe you're an IT manager um, or, uh, or you know, you're the person responsible for managing IT inside your business, uh, this is gonna be better for larger teams. Uh, but basically what Google are gonna allow you to do uh, right here inside the uh, admin panel, let me go ahead and zoom, uh, zoom into that a little bit. Inside the admin panel, um, they're gonna allow you to delegate and designate a shared drive to a particular organizational unit. Now, uh, what larger businesses do is they make use of organizational units to organize their teams, um, and you can apply certain policies to certain uh, teams. So for example, uh, maybe you have contractors or um, you know, you're a contracting business and maybe you've got people who are working out on the road and you wanna uh, you know, lock down certain features in Google Workspace. Um, you know, for some that might be right, only give someone an email mailbox, but don't give them access to other services. Uh, or it might be give them access to chat and meetings, but they don't need email. Um, and so you might wanna to choose to do that through organizational units. Now, what you can do here with the uh, actual shared drives uh, is you can have those organizational units uh, actually connected to individuals. When they're connected to an individual in there, uh, or sorry, an individual um, uh, shared drive, uh, you can apply settings to those shared drives that only apply for that organizational unit. And it kind of creates a bit of a link between the two 
uh, and Google are building out their different admin features and policies available for shared drives. And uh, yeah, that's that's giving us a little bit of extra feature there, which is, uh, which is pretty groovy. Next one is an update to Google Docs. And so Google Docs, um, you can, it says here, as it says, take action on multiple text selections. Basically, you can select multiple pieces of text um, and then do formatting with that, which is pretty cool actually. Um, and I thought I'd try that one out to see what this one actually looks like. So let's jump into, I have, here's one I prepared earlier. I've got a Google Doc here. Uh, and so you just need to hold down the control key on your keyboard, or I think it's a function key if you're on a, uh, uh, if you're on a Mac. So we're gonna highlight some text and then I'm gonna hold down the control key on my Chrome box here and select some more text. And then from there, uh, let's try and make that bold. There we go, it's gonna do that with multiple uh, pieces there. So that's pretty cool, nice little feature there inside of Google Docs. Google a bit by bit, you know, really trying to build out Google Docs to be a powerhouse in document processing. They are getting there bit by bit. Um, I, I haven't heard that many complainers in recent years that Google Documents can't do what Microsoft Documents can do. I think we've all moved away from that Microsoft-centric thinking, but I'm curious to know, maybe you can drop down in the comments, is there any reason that you still use Microsoft Format Documents in your business? Is there anything that you haven't been able to do in the Google world that means that you still keep an Office 365 subscription hanging around? Would love to know. I put a poll out on that a couple of weeks ago on the community tab on our YouTube channel, and most people said, they don't bother with Microsoft anymore once they've made the transition over to Google Workspace. But I'm curious to hear from you. Uh, let me know in the comments. Okay, so Google made another big announcement and that is that they are actually merging Duo and Meet. Effectively, they're gonna become one. Now, I don't know anyone in my life who actually uses Google Duo. Maybe it's a US thing, maybe it's people who really love their Android thing, uh, but I don't know a single person who actually uses Google Duo, but Google have kept it around, they haven't killed it, so it means that some people must be using it. Uh, but what this article goes on to explain is that Google have brought a lot of the Google Meet features into Duo. Uh, they've brought, I don't know, maybe some of the Duo features into Meet. I don't know, if, I haven't used it in years and years since it actually came out. Uh, but what they're gonna do is they're gonna actually bring them both into one. Now, you don't need to do anything or change anything, they're just gonna, basically merge all of the technology into the one app, uh, but effectively Google Duo is gonna become Google Meet and then they'll just have one tool, one application. Now, I don't know why they ever chose to create Duo separately. I understand that they were trying to create something that was a bit like Messenger where you could you know, call someone and it would ring. Totally get that. Uh, I don't know if if ringing people has been implemented inside Google Meet yet. I, I did see a notification the other day of someone like calling through and it actually popped up, but I don't know if there's official word on that just yet. Um, but what we are gonna see is at least, at least, thankfully, Google, uh, Google are actually putting everything in one place. And I'm a minimalist, so I'm always a fan of uh, you know one thing. I'm always a fan of keeping things simple. Um, so if Google is simplifying their apps, it means that at least their engineering teams can focus on building out new features uh, rather than focusing on uh, you know rather than focusing on multiple apps. So I'm pretty happy about that. We'll see. We'll see where that one goes. Basically, you don't have to do anything. But later this year, it's uh, yeah, it's going to be switched over and or migrated into number one. Okay. Next up, Google have said that you can now add tasks from chat into your Google Tasks, which is uh, pretty cool. Now, I don't personally use Google Tasks because we have a team, we use Asana, uh, or you can use any shared task management system of your flavor and desire to manage tasks amongst the team. But for anyone who does use individual Google Tasks, I put a poll out on this the other day and some people did say that they use it. Uh, right from chat here, you can uh, you know highlight one chat message and then automatically add that message into Tasks, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. I might even try this out. Let's see, uh, let's see what this looks like if we try it out in my chat. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom into my chat here. Cool, all right, so I'm gonna take a message here. Here we go, all right, it's actually available, add to tasks. I'm gonna click add to tasks and let this pop up. All right, there we go. So it says from unknown chat, which is a bit weird because, oh, and you're not gonna see my face there. Let me move my face. So uh, here we go, let's put it into my tasks. It says unknown chat. Oh, there we go, it found the chat. Gypsy and Peter. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. I'm glad to see that. Okay, well, uh, that seems to work. Personally, I don't use tasks. If you are using tasks and uh, you think that's awesome, I'd love to know what's your favorite teacher of, uh, feature of tasks. Pop that down in the chat for me. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I will cover that off. All right, cool. So let us move on to our next one. So another one inside of chat, 
Um, here, Google is saying that you can set a duration on your availability. Uh, if you're not yet using statuses in chat, they are pretty useful. Uh, I'll again go back to my chat here. So in the top right hand corner of my chat, you'll see that it actually says active right now. Uh, and I can click on the active button and choose a particular status. So let's say for example, uh, right now would it be appropriate for me to switch myself to do not disturb because I'm recording a live stream. So I'll say, okay, I'm gonna mute my notifications for 30 minutes and it's gonna leave me on do not disturb, which means no one is going to bother me. Uh, I can hear a phone ring in the background. Someone's trying to bother me there. Um, and so I, I could probably log into my dial pad and do the same thing that would make sense. Um, but here what that does is it allows me to um, have that automatically switch back to an available mode. Um, or if I'm in a meeting in my Google Calendar, it'll actually pop up and say in a meeting, uh, which is pretty cool as well. So if you're not already using status, this is really useful. Um, uh, and you know, if you haven't already started using Google Chat, highly recommend you make use of Google Chat internally in your business instead of WhatsApp or Messenger or Slack or anything else. Because of these deep integrations with the rest of the Google ecosystem, uh, it means that you're gonna have the best experience possible if you're actually using Google's tools.